Thanks for checking out our channel here. This is going to be possibly a how to repair video on this old unit. This is a uh, oh, it's a Hold'em Super Power 98 old solid state unit. Um, there's um, the International Super 98, basically the same thing as this one, just a different sticker on the front, maybe a different layout on the lights and stuff like that. But we're going to get into this thing, see if we can get it going for the customer. Um, there's information right there. If you've got any fence charges you'd like to send us, be happy to take a look at it for you. We do um, we work on cattle scales and low bars as well, mostly on True Test and Gallagher. So if you got a low bar that's giving you some fits, you know, happy to take a look at it. Um, we do get free quotes, and we have an 18-month warranty on the repairs that we do. So let me read the note on this one about what they wrote about it. Pretty long little note. He says, I guess the very first thing is that I'm totally amazed and thankful that folks like you even exist in this throwaway world. He said he tends to go to a lot of auctions and picks up old fencers in case one goes out. He said he bought this 980 new at least 25 years ago. And I can't even tell you where he bought it at. Where, where he bought it at. I was checking out a few days ago and found out it didn't work. I checked the one fuse was out, replaced it, and it worked for about 30 seconds and stopped again. I just bought some steers on Tuesday, needed an electric fence to work. I replaced it with a Sears unit I had. I was moments away from cutting the electric cord off the hold'em and recycling it when I wondered, wondered if it could find a new hold'em online. That's where he, he ran across our, across our website. In early November, we had a lightning strike that did over $7,000 worth of electronic damage. After listening to your video, I'm curious to know if the lightning didn't also take out this fencer. This is let me know what you find out. All right, so I'm not even going to plug it in. We're going to just kind of tear it apart. This one's got rivets in it. So we're going to drill the rivets out here and see if we can uh, see if we can get this thing popped open. So the one rivets we're going to pull out are all the ones on the front case. I think there's you know, one on each side on the front case. A lot of people that have these old ones like this don't, if they go bad, they'll take it like their local co-op, try to get fixed or whatever. And a lot, you know, a lot of parts are obsolete for these things. So you got to know either rebuild what's in there or retrofit or something. A lot of people don't, don't do that these days. They just, you know, throw it away and buy a new one or they, um, uh, or the company or the place they took it to, you know, can't fix it, so they just uh, tell the customer, you know, throw the dumb thing away and buy a new one. Well, let's see what we can do with this thing. Well, I don't know if lightning necessarily did some damage. There is a um, over here on this side. This is your fence and ground over here. But over on this side, your fencing ground, you got this little protection piece here for lightning. It's like it blew it right in half. So lightning probably did come in on the fencing ground side, but you can see that they've gotten ants inside here is what did it in. There's ants all over this stuff inside here. Um, trash homers, maybe you got, they might have gotten some moisture in here as well. You can see a lot of rust on the rivets that hold the uh, trash in place. Trash room might be okay. Don't know until we kind of get things running again. But this board is probably a little too far gone to salvage. I don't know. We'll have to just play around here a little bit and see. Um, let me go over to my stock of stuff first and see if we got any spare boards for units like this. So go, let me go dig around for a moment. I'll be right back. 
Okay, what I found over my stock of stuff is a later version board that they that Zreba, whoever you want to call it, that owned this brand back when they came out with. It's a little bit smaller board physically, but it's the, the updated version that they had out later on. This board was manufactured in 1997, but it's a new old stock board that we've got. So we're going to retrofit this board into it, I believe. We're going to try to anyways. The power cord is going to come into these two tabs here. And over here is what goes to your transformer, which are these two wires here. This does have a third wire that goes to ground. I don't think it's, ne it's a necessity with this board, so we probably snip that wire off or something like that. Um, so let's let's get some stuff unplugged. So like I said, I don't think lightning it did damage the output side over here fits and ground, but it didn't do anything to the don't see anything burnt over here in the power cord side. I mean it did blow that fuse, but um, that's the fuse did its job. We'll check those two fuses again as we tear into it a little bit more and stuff. But let's get this old board out first. All right, these got these little plastic stands that the board sets on. I don't know if we'll be able to reuse those or we'll have to make some other kind of stand to put it on. I think all the holes are going to line up correctly, but yeah, you can see the, it's pretty boogered up there. And we, I mean, it might be more wrong than just that. I might sit down here later on. I don't think I have this particular part in stock. I got capacitors here, of course. This little dial here is your back. Yeah, this is like kind of a calibration for your pulse speed. You can speed it up or slow it down. Um, with this little, I basically rheostat, like a dimmer switch type thing. Um, now, like I said, this board will probably not, all the holes do not line up for this. This was used on a different, different setup. I think we might be able to get rid of some of these tabs we'll fill up those holes with the epoxy i think we can make some of them maybe probably make two of them work and we might have to drill a hole we'll put a third one right there let's see if we can get that hole marked to where we can make that last one work Somewhere right in there. If we can get it close. We might be able to make it line up okay. Let's find a drill bit that's the right size to make the hole. Let's try this bit first. This is just a little bit smaller, but. from there Just one two and that one needs to be just a little bit bigger
let's get that let's see if we can get these little tabs out a little bit because they're been pressed in a little bit and they're not letting the board sna snap in there and stay in place so we got to pop them out a little bit and then we'll hopefully they'll there we go now it's grabbing okay all right so we'll put these are a little see that one's a little bit burnt so let's extend these let's um snip these off we'll extend the wires longer and then we'll plug them we'll solder them solder them and heat shrink them make them longer let's put let's my solder iron is heating up let's make these let's get everything prepped Ah, uh, no, this should be over there. Just gonna blend these, blend everything together, and we'll, 
bring the heat shrink up on there and let those cover them up. Alright, so now we're just going to, I think these should be long at the reach, so we'll just unplug these two wires, we'll need those, because the transfer's got wires long enough, let's ohm it out real quick, make sure the transfer was good, at least on the primary side, we don't know about the secondary side yet, but let's see, should be 0 to 1 ohms. 0.2, so that's fine. Let's snip this wire off. Don't need it anymore. And this is this is plug in the way. Well, let's check those fuses real quick. Check it from the inside. Let's go from. Okay, that fuse is bad. Both fuses are bad. Oh, that one's missing a fuse. They're both missing fuses. All right, well, that's that can help me then. So let's put new fuses in it. See, this thing's got a date on the inside anywhere. I don't see anything yet, date wise. Let's um, plug it in and see what happens real quick. Let's click in. All right, let's put a uh, tester. I give you the I don't give you that digital one, but yeah, the analog one over there, mine too. Oh, well, here's mine. Let's let's test. Now that little orange thing's gonna have to be replaced. I mean it's not a necessity, but it's for lightning protection. That's all it's used for. On the offensive ground side, let's just plug it in the way it is and see what happens. Transformer is good. Let's see if I've got another thing that can go right there. <coughs> I've got a blue one here. Let's see if it's got any information on it. I'm going to write it down because it's the last one I got. There's the number on that thing. Let's see here. Another one in. 
We're going to add some solder to this contact here. Tend the leads on on this here. Okay. Now this does not have a polarity to where it needs to go, but we're just gonna shoot the two up. Lead and the new solder spot. We and it's solder. Let that cool off. And then put the other one right there. That's good. Now let's close this case up a little bit. Let's see if these lights flash because we can always replace those bulbs if we have to. Let's turn this light off. This is your power light. This should always come on solid. <coughs> and this is the fence light. It should always flash with every pulse. And it takes about, I don't know, about 3,000, 4,000 volts or so um, to make this light flash on, this, on these units. And if it's below that amount, because you got a bad load in the fence, this light will go out. But I can't tell if they're lit up or not. Oh, they're flashing. That light's on constant. It's kind of flickering there. And this light's flashing every time it pulses, so it's good. So, ooh, up the art somewhere. Ooh, I heard it. Let's open this case up and see if we see anything arcing anywhere. Put that case back on a little bit. Let's let's make sure we're just oh anything I need to do. I need to get these rivets all the way out. The rest of them. Get the other drill bit, something that's a little bit stouter. These drill bits are a better steel, so it should drill through them a little bit easier.
the case on there and see what it does after we get everything kind of in place and see if it still arcs. If it's still arcing, we've got something too close somewhere and it's shooting a spark across something. Power light's not lit up anymore. It's not arcing anymore. All right, let's pop this back apart. See if we figure out why that power light's not. It might have been on its way out the door. The reason why it's flickering, I don't know. Let's. This wire feeds. Oh, no, that's why it doesn't flash. That could be why it was flickering too. There's a resistor right there. I mean, that's all buggered up. Let's see if we can figure out what size resistor that is. It looks like it's brown, black, yellow. Brown, black, you know, it's like a hundred K, hundred K ohm resistor. Um, I think I've got some of those. Let me look at my stack of stuff here real quick. Uh, here's a couple of forty-seven K ohm. We put two of those in series. Here's a hundred K right here. So I'm gonna put that resistor on. That's what protects that bulb from from too much current and blowing it, burning the bulb up. So we'll um, cut this resistor all the way off. Let's uh, see if we can get some more solder added down here. Okay. Two up at the same time. Hold it there for a moment so it hardens up and cools down. Then we need let's see. This is a little too short, so let's Cut it back to right there. Slide this up like that. And then we'll. Well, this wire looks like it's pretty. Got some arcing corrosion going on. It's probably one why another reason why it was arcing. Right now that's a clean spot. Let's see. This is long enough to reach that resistor or to cover up this. Uh, this lead. Yep, that's long enough. Let's 
put these oops heat these two up together that's fine let's um, bend that leg straight covered up like that that's fine let's um that arcing could have been coming from that broken wire i don't know when i had the, the case all back together it wasn't arcing anymore let's uh plug it in looking nice it's still flickering but Arcing over here somewhere. Let's see if we can see where it's arcing. Oh. It's like it's coming from this thing here. That's all, this, uh, probably all that rust, okay, let's spray that down real quick. Let's plug the Dremel, a little, little wire brush in here. Let's um maybe got a loose solder joint or something. Let's see if we can reflow it. And this is all electrically this is ground side, so the case is ground and the connection is ground and everything. So could just be a maybe that connection on the metal that the spade connectors plugged in on at maybe I didn't get the solder all the way down the copper tab that it's plugged on to and it had like a little air gap in it I think it looks good to me I'm going to get the reflow over here a little bit. I think we're good. I felt that kind of sit down a little bit more, so maybe we're good to go there. So let's kind of bend, set that down like that. Leave this lid kind of halfway open so I can see on the inside. Plug it back in. Oh, that's what it's doing. Let's see, stand it up more. What it's doing is arcing across there, shooting a the spark across itself. Let's do that. Let's see what happens now. I don't know what else to do here. I might have to get rid of it. 
it's arcing between itself there, between that blue thing. Yep, about as far as I can get it. <sighs> Not arcing anymore, so maybe we got the gaps far enough apart that it can't do that anymore. good. I'll probably set this off to the side and let it run for a while just to make sure we don't have any other hiccups but I think we are good to go. Now, this light flicker in here I don't know what this story is there. But it's cosmetic. It's not if this light was burned out or removed it's not going to keep the unit from running. Just a dummy light tell you the power's on, basically. But the light you just click in, you should know, hey, power's on, good solution. All right, let's put some screws in it now. Let's put some uh, short little Phillips screws in there. Let's see what kind of spark this thing will throw. So let's go from hot to ground. What? No, I already did it earlier. It was fine. All right, well, that's basically it for this little one. This video here for this this unit. Let it run here. I'll put the side, let it run for a while, then we'll go on to the next one. But I am going to save this board. We'll sit down at some point in time. We get more time and we're not as busy. We'll try to go through this board, maybe fix that board up again for them. But until next time, we'll see you guys later on and have a good rest of your day.